This video is going to contain spoilers from The Off, so remember, you've been warned. Titled Living Plus, Episode 6 of Season 4 of Succession has just been released, and it followed on really well from Episode 5. With the division becoming ever more present amongst the siblings, a sense of being lost starting to inhabit Roman's mind and the grief now starting to weigh heavy. Along with Kendall doing all that he could to ensure that the deal would not be able to go through, this episode was most certainly a good way to mark the middle of the final season. So with that, let's recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from this most recent episode. So let's get into it. Here is Succession Season 4 Episode 6, Ending Explained. What I thought was interesting about this episode was the fact that it started with a video of Logan saying that his kids were useless, and it became clear to see that it impacted Kendall when he heard it. The pain and reminder of him having it still being uttered to him by his father even beyond the grave. Kendall somebody who never felt like he'd be good enough to be given the role of CEO by his father, and we saw that he's now found his way into it and still feels a sense of imposter syndrome, despite internally believing that he can do it. However, by the end, we saw that he actually managed to deliver a good speech at the Investor Day, and it got a good response which impacted the share price and provided some good press, which was exactly what himself and Roman wanted. They wanted to up the valuation of Waystar to beyond 192, so that Matson would be smoked out and no longer see the deal as appetizing thus leaving them to be able to run Waystar on their own, a dream that Kendall had always had. Hence where we saw the main focus of the episode, Living Plus, come into it. A real estate community developed by Waystar where people had the potential to extend their lives and live in a much safer and thriving community. However, this was something that Matson didn't want and was planning on canning when he eventually took over the company. Right at the end of the episode, we saw the praise that was given to Kendall and the sense of fulfillment that he had in the job that he delivered, even to the point where he choked up a bit on stage when he mentioned his father showing that he still felt the grief and, more specifically, the regrets of leaving things that were unsaid. The final time that we saw Kendall in this episode, he got into the sea for a swim and we saw a sense of reflection that was in his mind. An almost, I did it, or an I'm good enough to do this look in his face, completely different to the first look that we had when the episode opened. It felt like he was going to crumble and I feel the entirety of the episode was leaning towards that happening, but it never did. It went in the complete opposite direction even managing to answer a comment about Matson's disagreement in a composed fashion. Kendall is embodying the role well and becoming the leader that he wants to be, even if he can see around him that nobody else believes in him, even Roman. I do wonder as well if that message that Kendall sent to Roman of his father saying that Roman wasn't good enough was a little bit of passive aggression. Passive aggression over the fact that he bailed out of the speech right at the last minute. It could well be but I feel we're going to see Kendall being the most confident we've seen him in a long while moving forward from this. Roman Roman was on a power hunger spree and throwing his weight around in this episode. There were multiple times where his position of power was questioned and it became clear to see that he didn't appreciate that. So much so that we saw him fire Joy Palmer and then he also fired Jerry when she pulled him up on it and said that he was just the caretaker. Roman is on Kendall's side, but he's definitely the coaster out of himself and his brother. It feels as though he's just going along with it, but he does question some decisions on the odd occasion when it comes to certain things, such as when Kendall was altering the numbers to the point where it could potentially become unbelievable. Roman hasn't had the chance to grieve for his father yet, and he was almost saying initially that he had completed grief a long time ago, but he hasn't. It's hitting him slowly and he definitely misses his father. Hence why that video at the end impacted him so much. What started as a laugh then fell into something that he kept replaying over for two different reasons. One, because the phrase of him saying that Roman always gets it wrong was something that he was used to hearing from his father. But more importantly, I feel as though he was just listening to the recording over and over again because he wanted to hear the sound of his father's voice, showing that he was still mourning him and that he hadn't properly started the grieving process. All of this waste of business is just keeping his mind busy and occupied. But within, he's still hurting. Even if he is, right now, still turning down condolences because he's full of them. He just wants to make his father proud and we saw him say, that's what dad would have done. So he's definitely making decisions with him in mind. I feel we're either going to see him come to the realization that he needs to start the grieving process or he's going to implode. 
because it certainly seems as though he's holding a lot inside of him. With the next episode looking as though Madsen is going to be going to the US and at the same event as them, I wonder if his presence and the hatred that Roman has towards him is going to be something that's going to cause a lot of problems and start that imploding process. Shiv Shiv is definitely a character that's playing the game the most. She's in with her brothers, in with Madsen and also in with Tom. She knows that she's being pushed to the side by her brothers as we saw on a couple of different occasions in this episode. For example, when Kendall sat down in her seat and she had to move, but also when she realized that her brothers were trying to tank the deal with Madsen. With Shiv on the inside for Lucas and relaying information to him, we saw that she was quite tame in what she did actually share. She didn't say to him that they were planning on smoking him out, but she was informing him on the other details prior to them being announced. So despite not being solely against her brothers, there is a lack of trust that is present. After all, Matson did state how somebody on the inside working for him would be of extreme value and would most likely have a place moving forward. So I feel she's just doing all that she can to keep her options open, whilst being able to get one over on her brothers if they do decide to betray her trust further. With the brothers not knowing that she's relaying information to him, I feel it's only going to cause an extremely large problem later on down the line. One thing that was particularly interesting in this episode with Shiv was that she was still grieving her father. That showed us that all three were. Shiv was, Kendall was with his slight choke on stage and Roman was too, despite not admitting it. It was with that when we then saw Tom enter the picture again and the two of them strike up a sense of intimacy that we've not seen in a long while. Something which was perfectly summed up by the biting game. A game that brought them close together but provided pain. Kind of summing up their relationship, I previously thought that she was just playing him in the previous episode when she asked him out to dinner, but this was the first episode in the season where she didn't push him away after receiving a sense of comfort, so there are still some feelings there between the pair. Tom's honesty and apology was something that I feel she also appreciated when they were on the bed. The laughter that was shared between the both of them was a moment that did seem as though it provided a bit of chaotic laughter, and it was almost quite creepy. With Tom not knowing that she's pregnant and with her receiving a few mystery phone calls during the episode, one could well have been the doctor, so I do wonder how we'll continue to see that on to her story develop too. Overall review I thought this episode was a really good one. We saw that chaotic nature of the siblings having their differences and trying to work cohesively in order to get different results. Despite not knowing it, Kendall and Roman really don't want the deal and it's clear to see. However, with the board looking as though they're going to be fuming if any funny business is found out, I feel that's going to be something that will cause a lot of chaos in the future. And division beyond the siblings, but instead, Waystar. The score in this episode was exceptional. They provided some real mood-setting scenes from suspense, impending doom, and almost a villainous theme during the episode when certain moments were happening. The siblings want to be like their father and it's forever going to be something that's going to be over their heads, like the cloud that Kendall wanted. I guess we'll just have to see how far they'll go and if any of them will end up getting what they want. I can't see them all being together at the end. The division is already so strong, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So, there you have it. Succession Season 4 Episode 6 Ending Explained if you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the I button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this episode? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. <laughs>